All right, to show you what I'm working with here, I got myself about 13 and a half pounds of boneless pork shoulder butt, aka Boston butt. And there are two of them in here, and they're from Costco. Costco doesn't include the bone in the uh, Boston butts. They take the bone out for you. Personally, I, from all the Boston butts I've done, I haven't noticed a real difference whether you have a bone or not. Some people like the bone. But, uh, you know, if you like the bone in, you can get the bone in. But basically, when you see these big packs in Costco and you wonder, wow, what can I do with that? Well, we're going to see what we can do with all that uh, pork shoulder butt right now, putting it in the new way Primo. But before I get it in there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to coat it with some yellow mustard, a light coating of yellow mustard that helps to hold my seasonings on, which are basically some Weber dry rub and... The last of my, I really like this one, but I'm running out because I use it all the time, this twist, Twisty Q Crooked Pig Can and Maple Seedling. So basically I'm going to be using the last of that with the Weber Rub. And then I'm going to be using my injection needle to inject the pork with a mixture of a cup of apple juice and a cup of apple cider vinegar is what I have here, and I'll inject that in. Okay, so here they are out of the pack. I'm not going to do any trimming at all. I'm going to leave all the fat that they have on them on them. And now I'm just going to get them coated and injected. Alright, as I'm finishing up uh, doing this injection, I'm going to start warming up the New Way Primo grill oven. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to drop the temperature down to a cool 220 degrees. We're going to keep this nice and cool, slow and low. And I'm going to do a temperature cook. So I've got the probe in here. I've just got it kind of staged in here for now. But I'm going to up the temperature to cook well the finished temperature to 200 degrees Fahrenheit that's where we'll finish but we got to do different steps along the way I'm going to now hit the preheat button the preheat to 220 hit start and continue my injection okay with the preheat done it counts down five minutes to give you time to get your food in so basically while it's counting down you open up them in the holder and I'm going to get my pork butts in there we'll see how they fit I'm trying to put them fat side down I want the fat side on the bottom to protect that meat while it cooks and I've got my extender ring in here so the top heat won't hit it too hard I think they may fit side by side barely well, yeah, they're, they're kind of crunched in there. They're crunched in there, but they're fat side down and side by side. So, two pork butts, as you can see, marginally fit. Now I'm going to take the meat probe and stick it in deep into a piece of meat. So I'm trying to find a real, real nice deep piece of meat. I want to find a real good one, good spot. Get it like right in the middle there. That's good. Now I'm going to get the dome back on and I hit the start button as I was getting the dome on so I've already hit the start button and you can see the meat is like between the upper 40-50 degree range but I'm going to let this continue until it gets to 165 degrees Fahrenheit I'll bring you back then alright so just about three hours have passed and the temperature is up to 167 degrees and that's running it with the cooking temperature at uh, looks like it went back to 220 all right so after three hours have passed the temperature has gone from 167 168 it's been at uh, about 167 for a little bit I'm going to at this point I'm going to pause and I'm going to get the lid off 
I've got some butcher paper here. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to wrap each in some butcher paper. I like butcher paper. It lets it breathe a little more than aluminum foil, so it's not really stewing, you know, aluminum foil. I'm going to get each in the, fo in the butcher paper. You can use foil if you choose and put like a half cup of apple juice over each and put them back. All right, so I've got them wrapped up in the butcher paper. I've got them back in there. I'm going to, well, first I've got to get my meat probe back in a piece of meat. So just going to try and stick it down into there and put my dome back on. And so we see the temperature dropped a bit while I was getting things all wrapped up and pouring that juice on and whatnot. So at this point, just going to hit start. We let it just continue at the 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll let this cook until it gets to 200 degrees, which is our set cook temperature. And so I'll bring you back later, but this is how things are going so far after three hours. All right, so things finished in about four hours, 15 minutes. We've reached the 200 degree target temperature. So I'm gonna turn it off. And we'll, uh, let's see if I can hold this meat probe without it hurting my hand. Seems a little... This one seems really tender. This one, maybe a little less. Let me check temperature on both of them with my instant read thermometer. This one's reading like 160. This one isn't at the... Yeah, this one is not, not done. He's in the 169. Well, this one is hotter. So we got one that's hotter than the other, for sure. So I'm gonna keep this running. I'm not gonna let it stop at this point. I'm going to put the meat pearl back in this cooler one. We'll just let this one hang out for the ride. And so get it in there. Real nice and deep. Put my lid back on. I'm gonna turn it on. And I'm gonna take my temp down to, back down to 220. I'm just gonna let, you know, this is slow and low. So we're gonna let this roll slow and low. We aren't gonna rush it one bit. So my temperature for my meat, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we got 200 degrees Fahrenheit with our temperature here. We're not worrying about the time that's set there. Well, it's not gonna show it to us now, but we've got our probe set at 200. So I'm gonna hit start. It's at 163 for this one. And we see our temperature is 220. So we're just gonna let this continue to roll. It's been about four hours. One finished before the other one, that's okay. I'm gonna let it just hang out there but you know, at four hours and I was poking it, I could tell it was a little, a little tougher than that one. So definitely this one just cooked faster than the other one. And I wouldn't say from all the things that I've cooked with this cooker that one side is hotter than the other side. I think maybe this one's just a little smaller. You know, maybe this one, you know, when it comes to things like a roast, you know, they're done when they're done. And sometimes you get one that goes faster than the other, but I'm gonna let these roll and this will, you know, give them a nice, lot more time rolling slow and low and we'll just see how this all turns out in the end. All right, so it's been nine hours running. It's been going at 220 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the meat is up to like 183 or so. Now that it's been nine hours, I feel that the meat should be pretty well broken down. So I'm gonna up the temperature a bit. I found sometimes if you just hit, when you're doing a probe cook, if you just hit uh, temp and you up the temp, Sometimes it'll later on revert back. You'll check later and it has reverted back to the old temp. So I'm gonna turn it off, turn it back on and have it running at a higher temperature to make sure that we're running at a higher temperature for sure. So just gonna turn it off real quick. I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm going to change my cooking temperature. I'm gonna make it 245 degrees. 
So 245, still a pro cook, up at the 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and gonna hit start. We see we're still at our 183 degree temp, but we're targeting still 200, and now our temperature is a solid 245. So we're gonna see how this plays out from this point. Okay, so now 12 hours have passed in total. Basically the first nine I did at 220 degrees Fahrenheit, then I bumped it up to 245 degrees Fahrenheit, and now the meat temperature is at 192 degrees Fahrenheit. Basically anything over 190 is good, so we'll go ahead and let things end at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the on off, just turn the cooker off. I'm going to get the dome off and going to get the meat probe out. It's, you know, the rubber part's not too hot. And now I'm just testing. You see how I'm going in and out? Your meat probe should go in and out like butter. That's when you know you're good to go. You know, when your meat probe goes in and out with no resistance at all. So just for uh, giggles, we're going to check the temperature of both, although we know they're both good to go. This one's at 203, 204. This one, he's at like 201 or so. So it's just a matter of where you get the probe at, where you hit the probe at, but it's reading like over 200 for both. So both made it a little over 200. So we're gonna get one out. We're gonna start pulling this pork. All right, gonna get this one out. And be careful. Seems my butcher paper may have kind of adhered together. All right, yeah, my paper for both of them kind of stuck together a little bit there. I've got my bear claws to basically start uh, chopping this meat up. Here's our meat, and kind of butcher paper kind of got a little stuck to the bottom there. That's why I like that fat on the bottom to protect the meat, and you know, can just peel the paper off from there. So this is uh, one of our Boston butts. Now that we've got it out of the uh, paper, and it's really feeling really moist, so. Just going to start using the bear claws to basically just shred this meat up so that I can have my pulled pork and it's just pulling apart. It's breaking away really nice and easy. Every piece is coming apart real nice so just going to continue to shred this. This part on the bottom may have been a piece that got adhered to paper so I got all the meat off of that and I just uh, discarded that hard part to the side there and it kind of got fused to the paper on that grill plate, but that's all good. We got some really nice tender meat here. I really like the way this pulled. This is, um, you know, similar to the outdoor grill experience right here, the way this one turned out. All right, I'm just going to take a piece and get it onto my plate here for some taste testing. So I'll just take that piece there. You can see it you know, comes apart real nice and easy. So we'll do a quick taste test here of this pulled pork from the New Way Primo Grill Oven. All right, so here's our pulled pork, 12 hours slow and low. Let me just uh, show you a piece. Go taste one more. So it came out very soft, pulls nice and easy. I mean, 
this is basically the convenience of a grill indoors for real. You can just cook up your pulled pork, you know, get that huge two pack from Costco, Sam's Club. You don't have to fear how big it is. You can just put it in there, cook it up real nice, slow and low, and have yourself some nice pulled pork at the end of the day and have yourself a nice meal with it and have yourself meals for days with it. Feed a lot of people with it. I mean, it's good stuff and it turns out good. And so this is, you know, takes all the hassle of being outside and the elements, you can just take your time inside, so much easier. Anyway, this, other recipes, heating instructions at superwaveovenrecipes.com. You can always get to this YouTube channel through waveovenrecipes.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Wave Oven Recipes. Also, you can get referral links for any of the cookers and the bear claws and other stuff in the video description. Same price at Amazon, except you help support this channel. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell and good eating.